everybody and welcome back. We are here today for Tutorial Tuesday, which is a new thing I have decided to do. I know a lot of people do Tutorial Tuesdays, but I wanted to do my own version of it. Because I do a lot of tutorials, I like to show people how to use software and how to do stuff, so I thought, why not, eh? So I'm going to do a Tutorial Tuesday, hopefully, <laughs> if I can keep up with my schedule. It's on my bullet journal list of things to do. But this week we are going to be learning about Yoast, which is a WordPress plugin. And I've done a blog post over on my blog, which you can find linked down below, all about Yoast and kind of like a beginner's guide. So if you are completely new to Yoast, you've maybe downloaded it because someone told you that you needed it on your WordPress site, and you think, oh, <coughs> hold on. And so that blog post kind of goes through bit by bit what each section means and all of that but I'm going to do it in video form and put it on that blog just because I think it's a lot easier to understand if I can just show you. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be looking at Yoast, we're going to be looking at how it can help you optimise your blog content um, and your website and just generally how to optimise stuff and how it can help you. So that is what we're going to be learning today and yeah you're going to learn how to use Yoast. You're going to be a Yoast master by the end of this video, I promise. So let's go. Okie dokie. Well, a lot of people were like, where is Tiny Square You and all your tutorial videos now? Well, Tiny Square Me is back, so hello. Um, right, so this is the back end of my website and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through Yoast SEO. So first of all, you have to add the plugin. So if you go to plugins, add new, um, if you don't already have Yoast, if you already have it, then you need to skip this step because you don't need it. Um, and then just search for Yoast, boom, loading, and then <clears throat> just add it to your website. Um, clearly I need to update it, but I will not do that now because that will take time. So if we go down here, once you have installed it, it will say, SEO and that is the Yoast plugin so if you click on that most of the time you don't need to mess about with all this jazz so I'm not going to go into too much detail about this section just yet but I will do it in future videos um, so in this bit if you go in here it will tell you if you have any SEO problems with your website which I luckily do not um, and any notifications as well so this could be any issues that you have with your SEO then yours will pick up on it. It could be a case of you don't have keywords in there, your meta titles are buggered up or something. So that's what Yoast will tell you. So it will highlight any issues that you need to kind of sort out. Um, if you are trying to rank for a certain keyword, like your whole website, then go into search appearance. Um, and this is where you can kind of put your meta description for your homepage. So in here you'll have the title. So this will be your site name your meta title which is what the title is is this bit up here so whatever words appear in the tab that's your meta title um your meta description if i go in here and i type in uh, the waffles i don't know first thing that came to my mind uh did you mean go to http waffles no i did not this section here this little paragraph of writing is your meta title so that is what will appear in here. And what we wanna do is we wanna optimize the meta description. Did I say meta title? I meant meta description. I don't know what I said, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, so that's your meta description. You wanna make sure that the keywords that your whole site is trying to rank for is in your meta description. So that is where you will type that out in there. So when somebody uh, looks for my website, this is the little paragraph of text that will appear underneath all that jazz there as well. So that is where you kind of put all of that. You can decide if you're a company or a person. So if you've got a personal blog, then you would change that to person. Um, if you have a business website, then it will be company. And then under here, you can put like what company uh, name is and all that and then just save. Um, and then up here, you've got a load of different other options. So you can decide what search engines see. So if you want all of your blog posts to be easily read by search engines, then you have to make sure that says yes. All of this stuff will be default to be whatever is best for your website. The only times you will need to change this is if you have 
any sensitive information on there that you kind of want to avoid search engines from seeing but on the whole if you are just doing this from a blogger point of view which this is what this video is aimed at um then I would say avoid this section. Really just focus on having your meta description in there um, and make sure your title is in there as well. So that is pretty much it for this section. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on this bit. Um, you can have a look at the social tab. I'm just gonna take a quick drink of water because my voice is dying. So you can put all your social profiles in here as well. I don't really bother with this bit just because I can't be bothered. Um, but this is where you also sort out your open graph. So when you share your blog post or your page on social media and you get that little snippet um, of like an image and then some text, what like the actual title of your page or your post, this is where all that stuff is sorted out. So make sure that your open graph metadata um, is on enabled. It will be by default, so you shouldn't need to change this. But if you are having issues with seeing those little snippets, then go in here and check that everything is enabled and you will be fine. So if you go into all posts and you look on the right hand side, you will see these three little logos and this is the Yoast plugin. So the Yoast plugin tells you how many internal links um, that post or page has. It will tell you what your SEO score is. So if you've optimized it right, then it will be green. If it's not that great, it will be orange. And if it is absolutely terrible, it will be red. Or just, they just won't even color it. They'll be like, nah, you don't even deserve a color. So it'd be great. Uh, and then you have the readability as well. So that's how easy your post or page is to read. And we'll go into this, don't worry. So if I go into this one, because everything's green, it's got internal links that I did really well. I'm very proud of myself. So you've got your main post bit here, and if you keep scrolling down, 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 that's when you'll see this box and it'll say Yoast SEO. Now I've done a whole blog post on kind of each section, so I'm not gonna go into a massive, massive amount of detail, I'm just gonna briefly go over it. So it will default by being on your content optimization. You can actually check social as well, so you have all your open graph stuff like I was talking about before. Um, and then have advanced as well. Avoid advanced, don't think about advanced for now. All we are gonna focus on is the content optimization bit and the social bit. Down here, you will be able to edit your meta um, title and description. Now that's what we were talking about before. If we go back to waffles, that bit there is your meta title. That section there is your meta description. So both of these are important for SEO because they tell search engines what your page or what your content is about. So in here is where we want to put any keywords that we want this page or post to rank for. So ideally every page that you have on your website should target a different keyword, which is why keyword research is so important. You want to have a list of keywords that you want your website to appear in search engines for. Um, and then it'll give you a better idea of which of those keywords should be targeted by which pages or by which blog posts. So for example, in this blog post, I have chosen to target the keyword create YouTube videos. So I did some research, I had a look at how many people search for this particular term every month and I was like, yes, it gets quite a lot of searches. I will target this keyword for this post in particular because I want this post to appear when someone types in create YouTube videos. So I went in, I first of all added it. So most of the time, not for every theme, obviously this changes, so you'll have to check depending on what theme you're using. Um, most of the time, the title of your post or page will automatically become the meta title um, and it will show you in here. Sometimes if you have a very long title for your post, it will go off the page. And in which case, it will tell you down here in the notifications bit that your um, SEO title is too long. So if I had create YouTube videos people want and be super awesome at YouTube every day, that would be a massive meta title. And down here, you would be like, um, your SEO title is way too long and no one is gonna read that on a search results page. So you wanna make sure that your SEO title is a decent length so that you can read the whole thing. There's no like, 
those three little dots that say, oh, there's more words after this. You don't want that. You want people to be able to read the entire thing. So you can put that in there. So what I did was Yoast chose for me um, what my SEO title was gonna be based on what my blog post title was. And what I did was I basically just deleted the code that was in there um, and I re-put in what I wanted the SEO title to be because it was too long. Um, so I made sure that my keyword was in there, create YouTube videos. So the next thing we have is the slug. I don't know why it's called the slug, but that is this bit here. So that is the um, text that is going to appear after your forward slash. Um, so if we go to the waffle recipe up here, we have forward slash waffles. So that will be the slug. And then you have your meta description in there as well. And then you have your focus keyword. So that is where you will put the main keyword you want to target for that page or for that post. And then down here where it says good result, usually it will have notifications and that will tell you all the things you need to do um, to make sure that your post is perfectly optimized. So if we go back to all posts, so as you can see down here, it says problems, improvements and good results. So the problems will be the major things that you need to sort out. So that's all of this. So say the keyword density is 0%, which means I have to add the keyword more into the actual main part of the blog post or the page. And then we also have readability. And again, the readability of your content is very important for SEO. So check in this section here, try and make it green if possible. Usually it's stuff like adding in headers, splitting up your very chunky paragraphs into smaller, easier to digest paragraphs. And then you have your social bit in here as well. So um, what you can do if your actual WordPress theme doesn't have open graph kind of integrated into it, then you can change it through Yo. So what you will do in there is you will put what title you want to appear when you share on Facebook, what description you want to appear when you share on Facebook and also you can change the image down there as well. So that is pretty much it for Yoast. What I will say is the thing to remember with Yoast is that it is not a magic solution whatsoever. So all it is is a guide to tell you how well you have optimised your post or your page. So it basically gives you a better idea of the things that you need to do to make sure that your post is optimised for SEO. Um, so it's perfect if you have no knowledge of SEO, if you don't really know what you're doing. It's a great little guide, it basically runs you through everything. So definitely, definitely worth having if you have a WordPress site. And that is pretty much it for this tutorial. If you have any questions about Yoast whatsoever, um, then just let me know in the comments down below. But I will love you and leave you for now. Remember to subscribe and to like this video and I will see you in the next one. So thank you, goodbye.